Whatever. Hi, Playmates. How are you? It's Aristar. I know I'm a little late to the party, but here's a quick update on Season 5, Director's Notes Part 1, and my brief thoughts on each of the updates, as well as kind of like a summary at the end of what I think this means for Exos Heroes. Once Part 2 of the Director Notes releases for Season 5, I'll also be sharing a little bit more information in detail about some of the content that we're going to be discussing together here today. The first hero ability has been updated to match more common names on other games. Block, Block Value, and Luck have been removed and replaced with Effect Hit, Effect Resistance, and Prince of Probability. This is a bit of a shame since Block has been really useful for building some heroes that give Block chance increase like Sia Khan. So he's now become a little bit uh, less useful than before which is really a sad cry especially since he made some cool appearances in the story of late. Critical Hit Rate and Critical Damage Value are now a percentage which makes more sense in my opinion like it being a percentage value and not a uh, numerical value. Hit which now have been changed to Marked and Dark will not display the hero information meaning that the stats will still have an effect but we won't be able to see them. I don't know why but I'm sure they'll add in a way to make this show. The Guardian Stone system has changed again. Instead of six different elements now, there are four based on the hero position type. You now destroy Guardian Stones according to the hero position type. The maximum number of stones are from the five pieces of equipment and there are no Guardian Stone set effects. When you destroy a hidden guardian stone, you reset the turn and gain mana, and if you destroy a revealed guardian stone, you gain 1 mana. I'm actually kind of confused on this one. I do think we need a little bit more explanation, and I do think that this might make it a little bit more complicated than before, especially with the new equipment system that we'll discuss a little bit later on. If you see my Back to the Basics Exos Heroes Positions Guide video, you'll see that the four base positions are Attack, Support, Defense, and Chaos. Does this mean that the stones themselves are now like Attack Stone and Support Stone, and Support has to break a Support Stone? Or are there different stone types that we'll get that'll be broken by a certain type of hero? Like for example, if the new stones are A, B, C, attack heroes can only break stones A and B, while support heroes can only break B and C, for example. Hopefully part 2 of the director's note will go a little bit more detail into this new breaking system. Third change is the ability calculation change. Basically, they're adding signature force effect into the calculation. This means that generals are now going to be more important in order to progress through the signature force, which I think at this stage is okay, especially now that fake words do not consume the hero when fusing them together. Fourth change is the attack hit method. This is just saying that there is now a small or like a mini critical hit chance for a normal attack instead of a fully dodged attack. So before you can dodge for no damage, block for reduced damage, a normal attack or critical hit damage. Now, if you dodge, you're still getting hit for reduced damage, normal attack is normal damage, then you have a strong attack which is like a slightly higher damage, and then a critical hit damage. So my opinion is like, <laughs> Why? I mean, dodge is pretty common build in games and makes assassins really cool to have. Now that there's like no dodge for no damage at all, like it makes support healing, I guess, I guess it may make like support healing heroes a little bit more needed in some team builds, but more than that, I'm just a little bit sad that you can now no longer just totally dodge an attack and it didn't even have to be assassin like Shell, she was like dodging attacks left to right, so it's gonna be kind of sad seeing that little cute sidestep and having them say, haha, you just missed or, or you know, something. Anyway, yeah, I'm dodge will be gone. Fifth is the element strengthening of elements or element effect increase. So like in most games, you know, like how fire is usually stronger than nature or grass and so forth. If you attack with a superior element, the critical hit chance and the damage applied will be higher. While if you're being hit by an inferior element, the invasion of the hero increases, which doesn't really make sense since dodge now it still hits the hero and not invades the hero. Yeah, I'm still a little bit bummed about the whole dodge thing being gone. Anyway, the next change is with the fake cores that their passive skill effects will now be shared by each fake core in the fake core theme, and active skills will try to remain as true to their original skills as before with just a little bit of enhancement. I'm taking this to mean that fake core theme heroes will all have the same passives just to like various degrees, so hopefully this will make black fake cores a little bit more useful, but let's see, hopefully more details again will be revealed in the second part of the season updates. 
For heroes, physical and magic attack type is now gone. So basically, there's no difference between the equipment that can be worn by the heroes. So physical type heroes wore the heavy armor, while magical type heroes wore the light armor, but now there's no difference. If their point is to make the equipment system easier, they did achieve that with this update, but as someone that's been kind of playing games for a while now, I'm kind of used to having the different sets of armor for different types of heroes. However, I'm going to be talking about the new equipment changes a little bit later on in this video, so stay tuned because this kind of change to not have the physical and the magical type of equipment might be a little bit useful in the upcoming updates. Hero Enhancement System is now gone, where you use spirits, those bird looking things, and the other heroes to increase the stats, and the plus 5 was required to bless the hero. The best part is now that those bird spirits are gone, we'll be getting gold and meat for those spirits. I mean, oh my god, like this is really good because I think that most players that have been in the game for some time now will have a stockpile of these chickens. I mean, I wonder what the ratio would be like for the trade-off for the gold and the mew, but uh, let's go ahead and see. The awakening system is also gone. I mean, it didn't take them too long to get rid of that, did they? Um, it does say that the heroes can still wear ranked equipment, meaning that ranked equipment will still exist, so still have to farm those bad boys, but overall, that increased stat from awakening will now be gone. I guess for me, that I really kind of struggled with choosing who to rank up first, you know, this is not a totally bad change. We just now need to focus on other outlets in order to increase the hero stats, which it looks like it's going to be through the equipment system, which we'll talk about soon. Hero element enhancement is gone since the elemental break system is now gone. There will be easier refunds for this as well. I guess that for players that have been here for a while, we'll get some hefty refunds to redo our heroes, especially now that hero nationalities and grades will also be changed. I mean, this means a couple things. First, signature force. We'll have to now rethink who to put on our nation teams. Second, summon rates. Heroes that have been upgraded from legendary to fatal will now have a lesser percentage drop rate, so they'll be rarer to pull. Like Grizzle, she used to be a legendary hero. Tanto used to be a legendary hero. Now you're probably getting them a little bit less since they're up they have been upgraded to a faded hero status rather than a legendary. Overall, having to kind of rearrange the heroes is a bit of a headache, and we've already been through this before. But I looked at the nation change list, and a lot of it makes sense story wise, like Benton and Tantalo changing to St. West, but others, like, why, why is Digis and Norm in Broom? But, um, yeah, oh, oh well, at least they'll make the gameplay, and we've always been kind of complaining how there's like little heroes in certain nations, so hopefully this kind of change, especially with the huge shift to St. West and Broom being a little bit more useful in having diversity in our teams. Signature Force buffs are changing to affect all heroes of that nation, not specific heroes, which is awesome because then it does give us a little bit more option to try out those other heroes that we really liked character-wise or design-wise, but they didn't really have that much, you know, effect in battle. Now for the equipment. I mean, before we talked about how there's no physical or magical armor, but now equipment will have a few changes, the first being substat changes. So this is like the new system, and it brings RNG equipment held to EXOs, finally. I mean, it was kind of on the horizon, you kind of had to admit they would have brought this in once or later. So now all the armor, they had different, you know, various percentages between the range, but all the substats were the same. But now the equipment have the ability to kind of have different substats, so you have to kind of choose and get the right piece of equipment and kind of upgrade it to get the stats that you want on the hero. The second change is the set equipment effects instead of the guardian stone. So like if you have four pieces of speed equipment, your attack speed will increase and you can kind of mix and match the different set pieces in order to get the kind of stat boost that you want. But you do have to have like certain numbers of the equipment from that same set in order to get that bonus effect. Basically, they're following the Epic 7 fashion in terms of armor and equipment. This would definitely allow for more like cash grab for equipment updates, but you know, it does, uh, does you know, in the end, allow the player a little bit of creativity enhancing the heroes. Now that they're kind of focused on giving a fair playing field in terms of hero enhancements, I think that the equipment is going to be the new caveat to customize the individual heroes in the way that we want. I mean, Line Games does promise us refunds and equal upgrades and trade-offs for the old equipment to the new disassembling, but we'll see how that goes. Exclusive weapons are now exclusive equipment, limited to the hero that the exclusive equipment, which, you know, that makes total sense. Like before, anybody could equip somebody else's exclusive weapon, so um, they were like, hey, why are you wearing my exclusive weapon? And then here, like, whoa, the, the game lets me do it. And then they're like, oh, okay, fine. <laughs> anyway, so now you could have exclusive equipment that's for a particular hero, and a hero can have multiple exclusive equipments. You just have to have one equipped at one time and enhance that one in particular. 
The same skin system applies, so you could apply a different skin if you have the exclusive equipment to that hero, even if it's not equipped up. All the existing forge and equipment crafting will also be updated to match the new equipment. And finally, they will have a recall system where they're allowing us to reset for a refund of all materials invested into that hero or fate core. Basically, they're not trying to piss off the existing players that will be affected by this change and will have all their hard work in essentially like gone <laughs> for like, I guess, the second time <laughs> in a sense since the game began. Effectively, just looking at this overall, where they're changing it from like hero focus to equipment focus, I kind of feel like they're taking that direction and kind of phrasing it in a good way because, you know, equipment definitely has a little bit more leeway in terms of revenue generation, as well as the fact that their story and not their actual gameplay have been getting a little bit more attention and a lot of players have been kind of staying for the story more than the gameplay. So kind of gearing the focus on that, they're, I'm thinking that they're trying to hope to increase their revenue a little bit. And by, you know, simplifying the battle system, I do feel like they're trying to combat all of the crash issues that have been happening. Um, I'm not a game developer by any chance, but I kind of dabbled here and there. I do kind of feel like, you know, eliminating or simplifying some of the intertwining systems that they have in the game hopefully will help resolve a lot of the complications in the coding and the development that will help the game crash a little bit less. Well, hopefully this gave you a little bit of insight into part of the changes that are on the horizon. It looks like we'll be getting this Season 5 update sometime, maybe in mid-December, seeing that they posted temporary restrictions to take place starting from November 22nd in preparation for Season 5. I mean, what are your thoughts? Really, I'm really curious to hear from existing players and new players alike about these Season 5 changes. Let me know down in the comments below. And if you like random gaming content, especially on mobile gacha games, please consider leaving a like and subscribing. I post every Wednesday and weekends. Thank you all so much for watching, stay safe, and take care.